Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Tim from Tim Talks. Uh, I was hoping to rescape this 90p this week. Unfortunately, I uh, got injured over the weekend and uh, I gotta go see a doctor for my hand. Um, got, a, got an injury. Um, so, I thought I'd just cover a topic that interests me and uh, it's kind of uh, ecology based and it's about a controversial YouTuber named Father Fish. So, let's get into it. If you've been on YouTube and been taking care of fish for a little while, you may have seen this new gentleman pop up. His, uh, his name's Father Fish and he talks about keeping fish in a pretty particular and interesting way. Uh, although, uh, you gotta admit, his uh, method of telling you about it is a bit divisive. He tells you it's the only way you can keep fish and if you're taking care of fish any other way, you're a horrible fish keeper. Uh, what he has to say though, like once you get past that, is kind of interesting. So I just kind of wanted to break it down and maybe deliver it in a clearer style. So let's talk about what he's actually saying in his long and kind of meandering videos. Essentially, Father Fish is discussing uh, aquarium food chains versus the aquarium food web and he's staunchly against aquarium food chains so an aquarium food chain can be defined as the flow of energy in an ecosystem so taking it from the top what do we got at the top of the food chain where does the energy come from well it comes in the form of fish food as you might have guessed okay so we feed our fish the fish digest it and then they extract those nutrients and calories from that food. And then what do they do with it? Well, they swim around, they look pretty, and then they do something that we all know about, and they produce some dookies, some fish waste. So from there, uh, the fish waste breaks down further. Um, and if you don't know, and it's kind of outside of the scope of this talk, is the nitrogen cycle. So we have bacteria in our filters and on surfaces in our aquarium that help decay fish waste um, into ammonia and then nitrite and nitrate. Uh, the nitrates uh, are then kind of used as fish food to provide nutrients uh, to our plants. So, you know, that's the summary of the nitrogen cycle. We're not gonna go much farther into uh, that topic. But these are the basics. And if you don't have plants, you know, you gotta do water changes to remove nitrates. Um, a little bit of a variation on this is gonna be like adding Malaysian trumpet snails or adding other detrit detritivores which digest fish waste and, you know, kind of promote the nitrogen cycle. Uh, additionally, some of the fish waste is uh, digested by other uh, bacteria to create a biofilm, which is food, you know, for uh, shrimp and other snails. And sometimes, you know, you get some fish that eat biofilm as well. But this is a very uh, superficial um, and quick uh, definition of what an aquarium food chain is. So let's get into the difference between an aquarium food web and an aquarium food chain. Now, an aquarium food web is a system of interlocking and interdependent food chains. So, you know, kind of known as multiple food chains that overlap. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna Google food chains and then we're gonna throw them all on top of each other because they overlap. Or you can just Google food web and this is what you get. Now I was looking for one a little bit more fishy uh, and I ended up finding this one. It's not freshwater, but it's still pretty, pretty cool if you ask me. So this is a food web structure of a subtropical coastal lagoon. Uh, so, you know, looking at this, it's really pretty easy to see um, the benefits of having a food web in your aquarium. Uh, you know, you got lots of di biodiversity, you have food that is clearly recycled. You know, you, you put in your fish food, right? And your fish eat it and then they, they poop and then the detritivores or animals that eat um, waste of other animals, you know, they eat that up and they grow and they reproduce and then some of those fish eat those detritivores. Um, so that could be like zooplankton or it could be snails or it could be, you know, worms or even scuds. Um, you know, the food is clearly recycled, right? So 
kind of in what we're just talking about, you know, other animals eating other animals that, you know, eat, eat waste. And then it would be pretty fun to watch all these different organisms um, interact with each other. I don't know about you guys, but if I see little things scurrying around my tank, I think that's pretty cool. And then if you saw a fish hunting that thing, that would be also quite cool. Um, so, you know, this is, could, could be promising here. So let's get into like, in terms of overall aquarium benefits. Um, you could easily see how there would be less maintenance um, as a result. There's more food in the tank for the fish, you know, because they get to chew on each other and that's always, or chew on the other inhabitants a little bit. So there's lots of food, healthy live food for them to eat. Um, you would have to do less water changes, right? Because as this fish waste is eaten, the decaying material decreases. And then you have these nutrients that could cause ammonia spikes uh, really just being used by other organisms. So, you know, definitely less water changes. You know, most importantly to me is I like when my fish... Uh, reproduce and breed and then you have a bunch of cool little baby fish in the tank because they're really fun to watch and you get to watch sometimes uh, you know some parental um, caretaking and, and just really pretty cool um, behavior from the fish and so if you were to successfully breed some fish uh, you would have faster fry growth because the fish have more uh, microscopic organisms to chew on right all these tiny crustaceans and worms such as seed shrimp or scuds or even like shrimp larvae like neocaridina um, or even if you had like a mono shrimp larvae that survived for you know 24 hours that would be food for fish uh, especially fry great fry food not to mention you also have live food in your tank which can promote uh, fish breeding right so also quite a cool, uh, quite a definite benefit. Now, one thing we should talk about is, you know, the father fish method. The father fish method advocates uh, for creating a food web. And his method is kind of uh, controversial because it's a little risky if you ask me. Um, or that's at least what most people's opinion are and happens to be my opinion. Uh, so the father fish method involves getting mud from standing water that's there year round, uh, putting this mud in a jar with botanical and leaves. And then you watch it for a few weeks or a few months and you notice all the little microscopic organisms that are growing there. And then you separate out these separate out these species using a pipette into quote unquote resurrection jars. You know, from there, um, while you're kind of doing this resurrection jar uh, thing, uh, you're loading your aquarium with dried leaf litter and botanicals that you find in nature near the water source, and um, you're then, you know, once your aquarium is loaded with, with these botanicals. You then pour in the water. Um, I was watching a video earlier and he literally said he poured in mud uh, into his aquarium. Now, that is probably one way to get an aquarium food web. Uh, however, you know, you're, you're putting your aquarium at, at quite a risk, right? You could be introducing tons of chemicals uh, you could be introducing uh, different pathogens, you know, planaria, hydra. Uh, those are some pathogenic organisms um, that are definitely in out in nature. There's hexamida, there's ick, there's parasitic worms, maybe camelanus. I don't know if you guys have ever had guppies with worms, but camelanus will destroy them. There's tons of pathogenic bacteria. Uh, and then there's fungus, you know, and these can cause columnaris or dropsy um, or kill your fish just flat out right sometimes these aquarium bred fish aren't as strong as their uh, wild type relatives and uh, these could all be pretty devastating to an aquarium all right guys thanks for watching the video i know that was a dense powerpoint 
Um, I hope you learned something and that you liked it. And if you didn't, tell me in the comments. Tell me what I could do better. I'm trying to learn make good, uh, good content here and uh, educate everybody. Uh, but in conclusion, I think the food webs are a great idea. But I just, I just don't know that the quote unquote father fish method is the best way to do it. Um, I definitely use oak leaves. I have hazelnut leaves in my aquarium. Uh, it's a good method. Uh, the leaves, you know, you can boil them ahead of time if you're paranoid about pathogens. With oak leaves, I'm not, but you know, I think, I think putting mud and pond water in your aquarium is a little bit extreme um, and a pretty high risk uh, for put for getting pathogens. Um, as listed in the, in the video. Um, so yeah, if you're trying different things in your aquariums, let me know. I wanna know what they are. Um, I'd love to hear from you. And uh, feel free to uh, leave me a comment about what you think of the video, what you think of what was said about food webs and uh, food chains. I'd love to hear from you. So until next time, guys, uh, stay positive. All right, have a good day. Peace.